Good morning, everyone. Good morning, class. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Adam Weinberg, Alice Pratt Brown Director of the Whitney Museum. I want to welcome you all to the 2019 Biennial. Yes, it's great. It's a great moment. Great moment for all of the artists, for all of the Whitney, and I hope for all of you and the public who will get to see the show. The world we live in today is increasingly complex, chaotic, uncertain, and fragile. What better time to turn to artists? Since its inception in 1932, the Whitney's tradition of annuals and biennials have been the occasions when the museum has most resolutely put our faith in the artists. The artists to help us understand and digest the significance of the moments we live in. The tradition of the biennial has become a pillar of the Whitney's identity and a central guiding force in our history. It defines who we are, a museum that champions the creativity, talent, passion, and vision of contemporary artists. I am proud of the Whitney for maintaining this tradition and never drifting from this fundamental attribute of our founding. Over the past 87 years, hard to believe, it has become clear that there's no set formula and manual for creating this exhibition. Instead, it is accomplished with few preconceived notions and is deeply inflected by the individual curators, Jane and Rue, who are responsible for organizing the exhibition as well as the particular conditions and zeitgeist of the era. The 2019 Biennial, magnificently co-curated by Jane Panetta and Rue Hockley. <laughs> Brava. Both members of the Whitney's curatorial department is no exception. They brought to the task their openness, their curiosity, their instincts, their experiences, their knowledge, and above all, their love of artists and what it means to be an artist. The curators visited some 300 artists working in the United States and abroad. This led them to discover associations, connections, and patterns of artistic approach and production that span the country and beyond by 75 artists and collectives who were often grounded in history while being committed to an artistic dialogue to propel American art forward. One of the most powerful aspects of this biennial, and something I think will become readily apparent to all of you, is that Jane and Rue strove to reach beyond the domain of what sometimes feels too present in the landscape today, the ever-present art market. In search for something that is real and authentic, there's a primordial element of creation that is essential to many of these artists' works. The working process is as important, if not more important, than the end product. The inclusion of a substantial number of films, performances, and intermedia works in this biennial further underscores the emphasis on process and ephemerality of both making and experiencing art. Jane and Rue have also wrestled with what makes America tick during this difficult and tumultuous time in our, in our country and the world. Real world circumstances cannot be escaped and essential questions are raised in this exhibition. How do artists continue to work in the face of mass dislocation and migration, racism and xenophobia, and the rapidly deteriorating environment? How do artists, particularly younger ones, survive when success is often measured by sales and financial gain? How do emerging artists with little means of support, often with considerable debt and no gallery representation, get a foothold? I truly believe that the artists in this exhibition are hoping for and working towards a better world, and I'm struck by how this biennial, perhaps more than most, is an invitation to immediate experience, learning, and participation. Art has the ability to open us up to new perspectives and the ability to bring people together, evidence of it here today. Though the moment we live in is challenging, there is optimism in these works through the presentation of alternate visions and possibilities for the future. There is a unity of purpose, curators, artists, and visitors are all in this together. We are all in this together. I would like to congratulate and thank Jane and Rue for their devotion to creating this biennial, their commitment to each other um, through a shared spirit and ideas is really touching and really amazing. 
Thank you both very much. With their intrepidness and deep engagement with the artists, they've pulled together a vociferous and stimulating exhibition that is truly grounded in poetry. It is so open, so spare, so elegant, so beautiful, and truly an amazing experience just to be in those galleries, even on a cloudy day like today. My great thanks also goes to the curatorial project assistant, Ramsey Kolber, and Carly Fisher, our curatorial research assistant, who have been working endlessly on this, and the entire biennial team, which means all 470 people who work at the Whitney Museum. They've achieved something extraordinary. I must also single out Moore Hefner, our tireless assistant director of exhibitions management, and our head of publications, Beth Husman, and her staff who produced the catalog. I would also like to express my profound gratitude to Scott Rothkoff, our senior um, deputy director and chief curator, who served as a wise sounding board throughout the entire process for the curators. But I'd like to really point out that his vision his clarity and his unerring eye are characteristics which we all admire and truly rely on. Now to our sponsors. And I really want to thank all our funders because they always take it on faith to support an exhibition which from the outset the content is completely unknown. That is really trust when you're giving money and you have no idea what's going up on the walls. Our presenting sponsor, sponsor Tiffany & Company, has been a wonderful partner. This is the second of three biennials they are generously supporting, and my profound thanks to the entire Tiffany & Company for believing in the vital place of art in our lives. I want to also acknowledge the Robert Rosencrantz Foundation, the Whitney's National Committee, who provided essential support, the Brown Foundation, the Philip and Janice Levin Foundation, forgive me for going through, but we wouldn't be here today if they didn't pay, John R. Eckel Jr. Foundation, and my great appreci appreciation to the Biennial Committee when, and its co-chairs, Beth Rudin DeWoody, Bob Gersh, Mi Young Lee, and Fred Wilson. Critical funding also came from the Further Forward Foundation, the Carpathia e Equity Fund, the Keith Herring Foundation Exhibition Fund, Sotheby's, and I also want to thank the consulates of Germany, Sweden, and Argentina. American art is truly far-flung. And I'm deeply grateful to the late Melva Buxbaum, Emily Fisher Landau, Leonard Lauder, Fern and Leonard Tesler for creating exhibition endowments to support this exhibition. In closing, I'd like to acknowledge today that the Whitney's Biennial has a long tradition of controversy and protest. In 1944, the Whitney Annual was widely criticized for favoring a too abstract modernist style over, over more representational work. The fervor over this topic went so far that in 1950, the Whitney, MoMA, and the ICA Boston jointly published a public statement in defense of modern art. The 1980s brought protest over the lack of female representation in the 1987 biennial, rightfully. And of course, in 1993, the vastly derided biennial, curated by Elizabeth Sussman, who is here today, angered the public for in fact being too political. It seemed at the time that much of the public was not ready for a museum exhibition that overtly took on urgent issues of the day, poverty, AIDS, homophobia, racism, and class lines. Sadly, these issues all remain in the present. We continue to address them head on, but today any line between the topics addressed by the sanctified museum and those in the real world are almost negligible. The museum is the world and the Whitney is an active participant. We recognize that it is a great responsibility and a great privilege to give artists a platform for their ideas and voices. This is a challenging time for many of this country's cultural and educational institutions. Here at the Whitney, we are engaged daily in exploring a range of difficult topics dealing with fairness, participation, and ethics. These complicated questions are also being debated publicly with a range of viewpoints being expressed on all sides. We take these questions very seriously. We are listening, we are discussing, we are learning. I'm deeply grateful to the entire staff of the Whitney Museum and board for working gather, together to better fulfill the founding mission and the aspirations of the Whitney Museum of American Art. I am optimistic that we will meet the challenges before us and our future will be better for it. As we celebrate the opening of this biennial, I want to thank every member of our staff for contributing to the realization of this exhibition. And I want to thank 
take this occasion to above all, first, foremost, and last, all of the artists who, for their participation, inspiration, and above all, for their faith in the Whitney and that being in the biennial can make a difference. Um, are the biennial artists, a lot of them are here. If you'll raise your hand if you're willing to, feel free, please do. Um, you're doing it. Thank you for doing that. Um, let's all hear the applause for the artists. It's the only reason we really are here. Thank you so much, and it's my great honor to introduce Scott Rothkopf. Thank you, Adam, for um, that really great introduction. And I want to uh, second his thanks uh, before they get thirded for all the artists um, in the room. It was really uh, wonderful to be here last night with all of you artists uh, to celebrate your achievement in this exhibition, to get to know some of you. I was really moved when I walked in and I saw this uh, little case of ID cards. I didn't know that we give um, ID cards to all the artists in the show, and some of you are wearing them today on your lanyards very proudly, uh, just like our staff. And I feel like it's a real reminder to me that the Whitney Biennial, really since the founding of the museum, has been a gateway for artists to join the Whitney family, to become a part of our story, uh, to enter possibly our collection, to appear in future collection displays, and I hope that all of you will always see the Whitney as your home, uh, and just to know uh, deeply uh, at every level that we are, we're there for you. Um, I have the really easy job of uh, introducing Jane and Rue, but before I do that, uh, you will recognize this for those of you who have been here before. When there are so many people from the press who are captive in this room, I like to take a moment to tell you about some other things that are either happening at the Whitney or that are coming up. So uh, I will say either bear with me or be the first person to get the scoop on some other story. Uh, you could skip writing about the biennial and just jump to the fall if you want. You know how to find me. Uh, but even before we get to the fall, I do hope everyone will have a chance to see uh, the beautiful show of just 18 paintings from our collection spilling over that looks at really the use of color from our collection in the 1960s. We have some great new acquisitions on view in those galleries, including a work we jointly acquired with the Studio Museum in Harlem uh, by Emma Amos, uh, as well as a work by Kay Walking Stick. Um, in June, we will be reinstalling a really major um, look at our permanent collection from 1900 to 1965. This will feature, um, I know many of you are excited, and those of you who have children and grandchildren even more excited, uh, the return of Calder's Circus in a special gallery uh, dedicated to showing uh, the pieces that's never been shown before. I'll keep a little bit of surprise. There'll also be in-depth presentations of uh, Whitney favorites like Georgia O'Keeffe, a gallery of Hopper, and even uh, some also new acquisitions like the debut of our fantastic new Norman Lewis painting, American Totem. Uh, looking ahead to the fall, we're really going to keep our eye on living artists, uh, which of course has always been the lifeblood of the museum, one of the reasons we were founded, as you know. Uh, and you know, after Warhol, we were dedicated a lot to thinking about the history of the 1960s, of course, and beyond. Uh, but now with the biennial, we have these 75 great artists in our show, and the fall will really keep uh, the foot on the gas in that regard. So first up um, in September, our Bucksbaum awardee, Pope L, will be presenting uh, a show that's in uh, our lobby gallery, and it's really an exciting moment for Pope L. For those of you who don't know him, he was in the last Whitney Biennial, but he's going to have a show at MoMA, a public art project with the Public Art Fund and a work here, and it's really fantastic when you feel like you get to collaborate with such significant peer institutions on celebrating a major voice like Pope L's. We also, in September, have the survey show of Jason Moran uh, on our eighth floor. Many of you know his work. He's an incredible um, musician, a real inspiration to artists. And what's so exciting, I think, about this exhibition is to feel the exchange that he has with other artists from our collection, be they Joan Jonas, Kara Walker, Glenn Ligon. Many of them will be performing here or have their works uh, at the Whitney and Jason, and his uh, live musicians will be here uh, throughout the run of the show. And then in November, we'll have a survey on our fifth floor of Rachel Harrison taking over the whole floor, another uh, biennial alum uh, like Jason and uh, like Popel, in fact. There we go. And like Edward Hopper, I could go on. Uh, but it's going to be an incredible installation. She has really conceived of the floor almost as an environment for a total work of art while looking back over the last 20 years of her career. And alongside that, we'll have a video installation by Alan Michelson, an artist we're uh, very proud of, uh, featuring a new acquisition. I'm sure some of you know his work, an important voice in the Native American art community, a senior figure. And that's an area that we are definitely uh, committed to thinking about more and uh, also 
showing more deeply. Uh, so come back in the fall. And now uh, I want to introduce these two curators, uh, Jane Panetta and Rue Hockley. Um, this is my fifth biennial at the Whitney, if you can believe it, or I can't believe it, but it's only my second as chief curator, and I'm glad Chris is uh, sitting right here too for moral support, and it really, uh, it does feel different uh, because it's such a personal journey you go on with the curators from the moment that you get to look them in the eye and give them this kind of amazing, uh, awesome, scary responsibility, and then um, they smile and say thank you and look a little struck, and I think I said, well, don't worry. If it's not that good, there'll be another one in two years. Uh, I'm not sure that that obviated their worry, and we don't have to worry about that either because they've done such a great job, but uh, I'll start with Jane. You know, she's been with us now for years since we were uptown, but just since we opened downtown, which to remind you was not even yet four years ago in this building, she's made incredible contributions to our program around the collection. She was a really key voice in our inaugural exhibition, America's Hard to See. She did a fantastic, uh, smart, interesting look at 80s painting uh, called Fast Forward on the eighth floor. And she's been a key partner with Chris Liu in um, shepherding our Emerging Artists Working Group, which has really become a kind of internal think tank, if you will, for the work that happens in a biennial and beyond all year long. Uh, she's curated solo projects with Willa Nassiter, uh, with Njedeka Akunili Crosby, and with Juan Antonio Olivares, and she curated with Chris uh, Mirror Cells. Now, if you think that she did all that in the last four years and curated a biennial, um, well, that's pretty impressive, Jane. I feel like uh, you set a high bar. Um, and I'll turn now to your co-curator, Rue, who has not been with us as long, but already uh, has made her mark on the Whitney and our collection and our program. Um, she uh, was one of the team that installed an incomplete history of protest from our collection last year. She co-curated the fantastic show of Toyin Oj Odutola's drawings in our lobby gallery. And she is the co-curator of our forthcoming Julie Meritu survey, another biennial artist, uh, who um, will be uh, working with Christine Kim at LACMA. The show opens in LA uh, this fall and then comes to the Whitney in the summer of 2020. So we're really thrilled about that. Uh, before I invite them to the stage, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge the incredible work that they have done with our public programs uh, and education department around this show. Uh, there is so much going on. There are going to be talks by artists. Uh, you'll hear about the performances, panels, opportunities for conversation about some of the difficult, uh, challenging topics that Adam mentioned, open forums for our guests, uh, moments when we will be on stage talking hopefully about their work and their ideas about art. So to everyone in our education department, Department, I really thank you and I look forward to this exhibition being a conversation that uh, doesn't end with the opening of the show but really is a beginning and that the museum can hopefully host a lot of uh, meaningful opportunities for people to come together around the ideas that matter to them. Um, so with that I just want to Welcome Rue and Jane to the stage. Uh, you guys did an amazing job. You have taught me so much. Um, you, I'm getting a little verklempt. Uh, you really uh, have made me proud and the museum proud. And um, it's such an honor to work with two colleagues like you who um, have so much intelligence and so much heart. And I think this, this exhibition shows that. So get up here and tell us what you, you want to tell us. <laughs> There's a lot of people here. <laughs> um, thank you, Scott and yeah. Adam. And thank you guys all for coming and being here. And we're super excited to talk to you a little bit about the show and our process. Yes. Um, so we're thrilled to finally be here. This is a process that started almost two years ago when Scott did look us in the eye and invite us to do this, um, a terror excitement in dual <laughs> equal parts. Um, so we would like to start with thanking both of you, Scott and Adam. Throughout this process, you've been tireless supporters of us, fearless supporters, advocates for our vision, protectors of our vision and of us. This is a really intense process, um, so thank you. We're really grateful for the decision that you made to offer us this opportunity and for standing with us and staying with us over this very long process that actually continues into the fall. We're not done yeah. after today. <laughs> um, along similar lines, many, 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 many people worked to bring this project to fruition. Adam mentioned our 400 plus colleagues at the Whitney and truly the biennial is 
a team effort on a level that I can't even quite express to you. Um, but especially, we would like to single out our biennial assistant coordinator, Lindsay O'Connor, and the entire exhibitions department, led with great kindness, humor, integrity, and rigor by Maura Hefner. It's really a dream team at the Whitney, and you really see it during the biennial. Um, the biennial catalog has historically been and continues to be an important record of the exhibition, and we really try to think of it kind of in tandem with how we organize the show itself. It gives a lot of space to images of artwork and artwork kind of in dialogue in addition to having text on, on specific um, artists who are in the show. The publication was designed, the book was designed by Common Name and we want to give a big thank you to our entire publications team and led by Beth Huseman. They did a fantastic job and I think again we feel so happy about the dialogue that's kind of taking place between the book um, and the show itself. Um, but perhaps more than anything, we're incredibly grateful for the 75 artists who agreed to go on this journey with us and be in this show. We're grateful for their incredible effort, their energy, the imagination, the kind of hard thinking, the conscientiousness. I mean, people were thinking about their work up until this weekend, um, which always adds a level of complication to it, but <laughs> I think is truly a testament to how seriously people take this invitation. Um, and I also want to reiterate, many of the 75 artists are here today and will be up in the galleries after this, so I encourage you to take out the opportunity to speak to them directly there. We're also very mindful today of two biennial artists who are no longer with us, James Luna, the performance and multimedia artist who passed away in 2018, and Barbara Hammer, the pioneering filmmaker who left us only two months ago. These were two profoundly original artists, really important artists in the canon of American art in, 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 in kind of pushing certain narratives, and we celebrate their memory today and are very grateful that they like, remain through us through their work and also their participation in this show. <clears throat> it was always really important to us that the biennial live not only in the galleries, but have a real presence throughout the building and throughout the run of the show, particularly through performance and film. Along these lines, we want to also thank Mary Carmel Holmes, Sky Hupinka, who's another biennial alum, who's in Chris's biennial last time, and Matt Wolf for organizing the film program for us. We are thrilled that they brought their expertise to bear on this project. We'll have three each of them will have one weekend for their program where it will show twice in the weekend, focused around specific themes and modes of filmmaking. This allows us to expand our film and video program beyond the space of the galleries, which is something that we really felt strongly about for our biennial um, in continuing the lineage here at the Whitney of the film program. Um, similarly, we're deeply grateful to Greta Hartenstein, who collaborated with us on the performance element of the biennial, ensuring that that is a similarly wide-ranging element of the show as a whole. Um, performances will be presented throughout the run of the show, using spaces all throughout the building, including the galleries, outdoors, our theater, um, and <laughs> other places that we're still figuring out. Um, we really want to thank all of them for helping to ensure that film and performance have a robust and varied presence in this biennial. Organizing the show has been um, exhilarating. Uh, it's been exhausting. It's been mm -hmm. kind of the best thing that I think we've both ever done. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a true privilege. Um, in the 18 months that we've been working on it, we did over 300 studio visits. We traveled extensively throughout the United States to nearly 25 cities and locations. We were spent a total of 14 weeks on the road we, when we calculated, which is kind of a shocking number. Not continuously, but it's, you know, it's a long it's time. A um, and we did this together, and that was really important to us. We felt strongly that we needed to work as a team, and that it was really important for us to see the work together, to see the artists together, to go to these places together, so that when it came time to make these critical decisions about what you see here, we would be on the same page and have a similar um, backlog of experience to draw upon. So this was really fundamental to our experience, and I have to say it's been uh, a true honor and a pleasure to work with Jane on this. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we wanted to think a lot, we thought a lot about how the biennial would look and feel. Um, we wanted it to think about, rather than perhaps monographic rooms, which sometimes these types of shows would privilege, we really wanted to think about how to put artists into dialogue with each other. This is something that we drew from actually our work here at the Whitney as curators at this institution who work with the collection, um, putting together shows where the work and the artists are in dialogue with, dialogue with each other in one room. 
So while some rooms may have only one artist, others may have as many as four to five. Um, this was an attempt to tease out conversations that we saw happening with, amongst the various artists, as well as kind of in the broader, um, sh the broader run of the show. And for us, this felt like a really incredible opportunity, both a challenge, but also an opportunity and a way to really utilize the incredibly flexible exhibition space that we have here at the Whitney. I think um, one of the most exciting things about being asked to do the show is that you know that this is meant to be um, a snapshot of contemporary art making over the past two years. That, that it's sort of that that very tall order, um, and this has always been the show's distinguishing hallmark. While it's inevitably impossible to fully encapsulate such a broad period or region, Rue and I feel strongly that the show represents many of the important ideas and artistic impulses at play in this moment. Some key issues and approaches of the works on view include this idea of the mining of history as a means to reimagine the present or future, a profound and sustained consideration of questions of race, gender, and equity, and explorations of the vulnerability of the body. And these were really, these were not themes we kind of went into the process overlaying onto what we saw. I would say we really went out into the process with a very open mind, and these were the, the things we were seeing that kind of began to bubble up. Concerns for community also appear throughout the exhibition in the content and social engagement of the work, as well as in the ways that artists navigate the world. Many of the artists emphasize the physicality of their materials, whether in sculptures assembled out of found objects, heavily worked paintings, or painstakingly detailed drawings. A related emphasis on artists' hands suggests a rejection of the digital space and related slick package presentations of the self in favor of overall, I would say, more individualized and idiosyncratic democratic work. But beyond this, and maybe more importantly for Rue and I, this biennial is a reminder of the ways in which art artists grapple with difficult contemporary issues and consistently stay engaged with aesthetic and formal questions, either exclusively or in the service of particular ideas or messages. Accordingly, the biennial for us is deliberately not any single thing, and we hope it suggests an emphasis on the ideas equal to the ways in which artists impart them. Beyond this, we are grateful and proud of the museum for allowing us the chance to show this important work and to welcome the ideas and practice of the 75 artists into the space of the Whitney. So thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.